Today I'm going to share with you my Sony ZV-E1 S-Log3 settings, exposure method and color grading workflow. However, if you have a different camera than the Sony ZV-E1, don't skip this video because the information that I'm going to share with you today will work with pretty much any new Sony camera as long as it can shoot in 10-bit video. With that said, let's start. Starting with the settings, I always shoot in 4K resolution and XAVC S file format. I don't use the XAVC HS file format because it doesn't support 25 frames per second and I don't use the XAVC SI file format because it takes up too much space. However, if you want the absolute best image quality from the Sony ZV-E1 and make it easier on your computer to edit, then definitely use the XAVC SI file format. But keep in mind that it takes up a lot of space. Next, I always shoot in 10 bit 422 with a 140 megabit record setting. This delivers the best image quality and the most color information, providing more flexibility in post production. Then I set the monitor brightness to sunny weather to make it easier to judge the exposure because ZV-E1's display isn't very bright. And I enable Gamma Display Assist, which essentially overlays a Rec. 709 LUT on top of the flat looking S Log 3 footage to make previewing much easier easier. However, if you want to go one step further, you can also install costume LUTs on the ZV-E1 for previewing purposes. I've made a whole YouTube short video about that. You can watch it somewhere on my channel. As for the picture profile, I use picture profile 1 with gamma set to S-Log3, color mode set to s Cine, and detail set to minus 7. I leave the rest at the default settings. Moving on to exposure, I only shoot at the base ISO of 640 because it delivers the best image quality and the widest dynamic range. However, the ZV-E1 has a dual base ISO. The second base ISO for S-Log3 is at 12,000 800, so if you shoot in low light a lot, this can be a great option. To just the exposure, I either use the aperture and the filter or in worst case scenario, shutter speed. I never ever use the ISO to adjust the exposure because this can add noise to the image. Now, when exposing for skin, I generally aim for Sony's recommended 41% middle gray exposure. From my experience, overexposing shots with skin tones can make them look very mushy and I don't like that. However, to expose for 41% middle gray you need to use a gray card which I don't really use often because it's inconvenient in most cases. Instead, I just set the zebras on the camera to 55% and adjust the exposure until the zebras cover the majority of the brightest parts of my face. The reason I'm using 55% zebras is because from my tests, it's pretty much equal to 41% middle gray if I use a gray card. However, if you have darker or brighter skin than mine, you might need to do some tests. It's actually pretty easy. Just place a gray card right beside your face, Expose your shot to 41% middle gray, remove the gray card from the frame and adjust the zebras on the camera until they cover the majority of the brightest parts of your face. Usually somewhere between 48% to 58% zebras should work for most skin complexions. Now for shots where skin tones aren't dominating such as landscape shots or for shots with a dark environment like a forest for example, I tend to overexpose by about 1 to 1.7 stops above 41% middle gray to maximize the dynamic range and reduce noise as much as possible. So long story short, if the shot involves skin tones, I don't really tend to overexpose anything because it doesn't really deliver the best results, at least in my personal opinion, you might have better luck. But for anything else really, I tend to overexpose by about 1 to 1.7 stops to get the least amount of noise possible and also the widest dynamic range. Now the reason why overexposing your shots results in much less noise is actually very simple. When you overexpose your shot or expose to the right, you are lifting up the shadows and noise usually lives in the shadows and if you make the shadows brighter, you get much less noise. It's that simple. However, I want to mention something very important. If you're shooting in a controlled environment like I am right now in a studio where you can control the lights, you don't always have to overexpose because you can use external lights to bring up the exposure in the shadows. 
So for example, for this shot, I exposed for my skin, basically for 41% middle gray. And this probably results in some noise behind me in the darkest parts of the frame. You probably can see it. But if I would use external lights to bring up the exposure in the shadows behind me, I will pretty much eliminate all the noise in the shadows. So you don't always have to overexpose your shot in camera. If you're shooting in a controlled environment, you can just use external lights and bring up the exposure in the shadows which will result in much less noise. All right, now let me share with you the tools that I'm using to overexpose my shots. The first tool is the gray card. If you want to overexpose your shot by 1.7 stops with a gray card, it's actually very easy. All you have to do is set the zebras on the camera to 55%, then adjust the exposure until the zebras are clearly visible on the gray card. However, like I said before, using a gray card is not always practical, which is why I mostly rely on multimetering on camera to judge if I'm properly exposed or not. Multimetering basically calculates the exposure for the whole scene. It's not really that accurate unless the light is really flat, but it gives you a general idea of what's happening in the scene. I basically, adjust the exposure and make sure the multimetering is roughly at plus 1 to plus 1.7 unless I'm shooting directly at the light source, like for example the sun, in which case I just rely on the camera's display to judge exposure. Finally, if there is something that is pure white in the scene, like white skies for example and I clearly want to expose for the highlights I use zebras I set them to lower limit 94 plus because that's the clipping point for s 3 and I adjust the exposure until the zebras are no longer visible in the highlights or basically brightest parts of the image actually it's good practice to expose slightly lower than that to preserve the highlights as much as possible so basically you expose your shot until you see zebras in the brightest parts of the frame then you reduce the exposure until the zebras are no longer visible and then you reduce it by extra third or sixth of a stop to preserve the highlights as much as possible. Essentially your job is to find the sweet spot between the shadows and highlights so you won't clip either of them to get the maximum dynamic range, maximum information possible in your frame. All right, let's move on now to color correction. I'm using DaVinci Resolve and I think it's the easiest one to use to color correct pretty much any footage, but what I'm going to show you today will work with pretty much any editing software like Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro. So first of all, let's go to the color page and the first method I'm going to show you is the easiest one, basically applying a conversion LUT. You can click a node, your first node, right click on it, then go to LUT, Sony, and these LUTs come pre-installed in DaVinci Resolve, and then you select S-Log3 as Gamma 3.C to Rec 709. And now if you want to do your further adjustments like adjusting the exposure, contrast, white balance and whatnot, you need to do these adjustments before the LUT because if you're going to do it after the LUT, you're going to work in the narrow Rec 709 color space. So always work before the LUT adjustment. So for example, if I want to adjust the exposure for this shot, I'm going to add a node serial before the LUT again. And I'm going to go to my primaries offset to adjust the exposure, just bring it slightly down. Also, I can go and adjust the contrast if I want to. Now, if you're not using DaVinci Resolve, you will not have these LUTs pre-installed in your program. So you'll have to go to sony.com and download the official LUT for your camera. These LUTs are completely free from Sony. Or if you want something better, but it will cost you some money, you can invest into these Phantom LUTs, which are really amazing. And these LUTs also include some creative LUTs built into them. So for example, you have the neutral LUT, which will basically do the same thing as the s -Log 3 Sony LUT, but if you want to have this uh, conversion LUT with a creative look applied all in one, you can for example select this s 3 LUT and apply like a tungsten or utopia LUT and as you can see it pushes the image towards like teal and orange all in one LUT. What's good about this LUT is that they are a bit better when it comes to skin tones, the phantom LUTs, and also they have the creative looks built into them so basically you can achieve very great results really quickly without doing all sorts of things like you know having a lot for uh, converting your footage and then having a lot for creative look this will have one lot pretty much for 
everything. But I am not using any of these. I'm actually using the color space transforms in DaVinci Resolve because I mostly work in this color space. I'm working in the DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate Color Space because it delivers the most color information possible and also the widest dynamic range to work with. So if you want to have the best results, if you're using DaVinci Resolve, I highly recommend to use the DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate Color Space. And the way you work in this color space is with color space transform you'll have to input a color space transform and also output a color space transform basically you'll go from s-log trim to davinci white gamut and from davinci white gamut to your output color space in my case it's rex 709a because i'm using a mac computer so let me show you exactly how it works basically go here to the effects panel search for color space transform apply it here and also you apply one in here then in the input let's call it input and then let's call this one output so in the input you're going to put the details of your camera so basically a sony s gamma 3 cine and then here it's going to be s log 3 and then output color space is going to be the timeline the working color space of the timeline which is da vinci white gamut and then da vinci intermediate and then you're going to go to the output color space and basically take da vinci white gamut and output it to rec 709 because you're publishing to rec 709 so i'm gonna go to da vinci white gamut da vinci intermediate and then i'm gonna choose rec 709 and if you're using a windows computer you should choose output gamma as gamma 2.4 but i'm using a mac computer which is why i'm going to use a rec 709 type a where it is right here and now as you can see i'm going to enable this and disable it pretty much did the same thing as with the conversion LUT, but now we have the widest uh, color space possible to squeeze out the most color information and also the most exposure information. And here you don't need to add the nodes before the input or after. You basically work in between the input color space and output color space transform. But if you want to apply creative LUT, you should apply the creative LUT after the output color space transform. So for example, if I want to add one of my favorite plugins and uh, enhancer i would apply it after the output color space transform because lats are usually designed to work in a rec 709 color space so if you're going to put this lat in here they're going to be in the da vinci white gamut color space and they're not designed for that so it's not going to look correctly so you should always apply your creative lats after the output color space transform so this is basically how i work with s log trim on the zve1 i use the same settings as i mentioned in the beginning of the video then I expose my shots the way I showed you if it's skin I basically expose it correctly to 41% middle gray and if it's anything else really like landscape shots or anything that doesn't involve skin tones I overexpose my shots to get the least amount of noise possible and also the widest dynamic range and to color correct and color grade my footage I use color space transforms with da Vinci white gamut intermediate color space to get the widest dynamic range possible to work with and also the most color information possible this is basically it if you have any questions or comments or whatnot let me know down below and i guess i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching